Hi friends, Meg's here. How's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's doing great. Thank you so much for joining me. So I asked my son to watch the babies while they were resting so I could just jump on and maybe do a quick video. <laughs> Isn't it funny when I say that? A quick video. <laughs> Let's see what we can do anyways. So um, I'm just really in the mood to do something even if it's just a little bit of something. So as of right now, um, we, we've been working in our journal, of course, and I'm not going to go through all that. I've been uh, showing you this journal every single time I start recording. <laughs> and as of right now, I haven't even uploaded the last video I recorded because there's a section that I have to edit. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping I can get that up. But we are working in our little journal, our Japanese-inspired journal. And um, so just in case that video doesn't work out, <laughs> I'm hoping it does. This is what we did the last time on the video. We just did one collage, and yes, it took me like the whole hour to do it, but um, I think it came out brilliantly, if I may say so myself. It's really busy and just absolutely beautiful. Of course, this will be in a book, so both pages won't be together. All they, uh, you know, they'll be in like, like this. This is, I marked it where it's going to go, so it's going to look like this. I mean, doesn't that just look so good? I think it does anyway. So just a collage, nothing like super hard, but I just think it turned out really beautiful. And I added this right here. I didn't do this in the video, so I did add that. So that is what um, we did last time. And I went ahead just when I had 10 minutes by myself and um, I just did the other sides. Now these were collage, or excuse me, this was jelly plate in the background. And so I have these I have so many digitals you guys know I'm obsessed with digitals um, and so I will link them below I just you know because I started talking I you know went blank on whose digital this is because I just have so many but I I saw this on um, Gail's video I guess the person who owns the shop sent her these digitals to review and to share on her channel and I went right over and got them so everything's listed below I like to give the shops credit where credit's due for their beautiful images. And I did speak with this owner and asked if I may use this in journals that if I want to sell them. And she did say, absolutely, just please give her credit. And so I do feel comfortable saying that since I did speak with her. Um, but I, I don't know why I just went blank. It's something ephemera, junk journal ephemera or something like that. But I'll link it below. These beautiful Japanese inspired digitals. They're gorgeous. Anyway, so um, I just went ahead and glued her on to this. I, I fussy cut her out of the digital and um, glued her on my background. I did some sewing, some messy stitching, some washi tape. And the other side... This, I do know, is Mrs. Cog's image. This is a beautiful, um, actually two different jelly plated backgrounds. This was one jelly plate right here. I think that was a postcard, but I put it on here because I liked it. I added some, um, you can probably not see it very well, but some tea bag back there. And then this is actually a functioning pocket. And then we have a functioning pocket up here, which is pretty thin, or, you know, small, but we can put a nice small tag in there. So there's a pocket here and a pocket here. And I just love how this is turning out. It's turning out exactly my style. Um, I just love it. So, um, so I want to add just a little bit different color here to break up this, this orange and this red. There's just a lot of it. So I just, um, I actually I say break up this color and I added, I grabbed more red stuff, but and more brown. <laughs> but I did find this piece right here. Just jelly plate with some, um, just a little scrap piece that I sewed on. And I think that this will just add a little bit more. Um, so literally I'm just going to start, I don't even know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm just going to start playing around. And then I think I'm going to show a technique. Yeah, this might not look how I envisioned it, so I don't even know if I'm going to use it. But let's just see if I can break this up a little bit. I don't know. Um, so anyways, uh, there's a couple things I wanted to share. Uh, I do have a whole bunch of new supplies that some I got for a lot for my birthday from different people. Um, I did manage to pick some things up from my sale, from selling some stuff. And I was going to show you guys in a video, but I know some people don't like hauls. And I did say I wasn't going to do any more haul videos because I don't want people to feel like they have to go buy stuff. 
But I, there are so many things I just want to share with you guys. Um, yeah, it's not how I envisioned it. Um, in case you want to purchase something, you know, that you see on here. Hold on. i got to think for a minute. That just seems too big and too much. So sometimes that happens. It doesn't turn out how you want it. So maybe I'll just leave this alone for now, but I do want to break up this color and I like this piece here. But um, let me show you some of these. I'm kind of just doing my thing. I hope that's okay with you guys. Look at all this. So this is all my stuff that I have for this journal. These are just the cutouts from when I cut out uh, the background paper when I cut out these geishas. Look at this geisha. Can you see how beautiful she is? This is one of those digitals and I think I did a pretty good job cutting, fussy cutting her little toes and everything. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with these geishas. I can't. And this was the background. So maybe we'll do something with these scraps. Um, I want to grab a new piece of paper and work on another spread. But I wanted to show you um, these beautiful tags. I went to video this. Now, I'm going to link this video below because it's such a cool technique. Tim Holtz did, you know, he does his Facebook Live and he was showing his um, paints and he did this technique. Um, it's called, uh, 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 I forgot what it's called, but it, I'll link the video. Um, and I was going to do this on video. And I wanted to practice it because I never did it before, and it was just a mess. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm glad I tried it before I filmed. <laughs> but I love the outcome. Um, yeah, it looks so cool. Um, so yeah, anyways, but I have all of these. Look at all these digitals. Oh my gosh. So many beautiful digitals from so many wonderful places. I just, I could make a thousand Japanese journals, you guys. I really could. And I really wanted to make some to sell, like some beautiful ones, you know, like with all the work I'm doing, it, like in this one, I love doing my artwork and making it like a mixed media journal type thing. Um, but I don't know if I want to spend all those hours doing it and then nobody wants one. I'll, I think I'll be pretty heartbroken <laughs> and stuck with a bunch of Japanese journals. But I do have all this stuff, so I probably, I mean, I have so many papers that I've, I've, I've been... Um, collecting this stuff for a couple of years now um you know I didn't just go out and buy it all right now I have real vintage stamps that are Japanese stamps I just have so many things Japanese um ledger paper like night early 1900s ledger paper and washi tapes and just all these beautiful things and um so I definitely will be made I, I know I'm gonna make some some more than just this one journal for myself. Um, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, keep that in mind if you like Japanese stuff and you're <laughs> thinking about purchasing a journal, I think I'm gonna make some more, so. So anyways, I have to get rolling on this one. Uh, I'm just kinda getting back into the swing of things here. Um, but yeah, so what I was gonna do is just look through here and see if I can find a, another little piece to break that up maybe and like I said I probably can't remember where all this stuff's from off the top of my head so I will link you know what I can below um, and so if we don't break up this page that's okay I do have some other things I want to share but let me just see if really quickly I can just add a little something and like that looks good to me just a little something to break this up and add color and like, I'm super good with this. So, I think that's cool. I'm going to just do that. And I know I just want to add this, but it's not really working out. And sometimes that happens too. <laughs> so, that's okay. That's okay. I could add maybe even another piece, but no, that wouldn't work. Okay. So, let's just add just a little something to this. That's good. I'm going to ink that up. And then we're going to move on to a little... There's two more things. I'm thinking about doing another spread and just doing a mixed media background where we add some texture paste and some gesso and like just ink it and stuff like that and I'm also thinking about doing a tag um, because my sweet friend Crystal um, she has a channel I'm gonna link it below uh, it's called Royal G and she's kind of new to the junk journaling scene and mixed uh, I guess junk journaling yeah 
Um, and so, yeah, she's really sweet. I just really love her. Um, really, I've gotten to talk to her a little bit through messages, and I watch her videos. She's just really down to earth, and um, I love that. She also purchased a journal from me. She's the only one who made, who purchased one of my little mini journals. I was so grateful, and she showed it on her channel, and she just seemed to really love it. So thank you, Crystal, if you're watching. <laughs> that really just touched my heart, made me feel really good, and um, yeah. So, anyways, she I I one of the journal the journal that she purchased was a boho journal, just a little mini one, and I did this tag in there, and she was like, I don't know how she did this. And I was like, well, maybe I'll do that on camera and show you <laughs> how I did that. So maybe we'll just do that real quick. So Crystal, I got you. We're going to, well, I think I'm going to do that. We'll do a, a quick tag and I'll show you how I made that specific tag. So let's glue that on and see how it just kind of adds a little more. Now, of course, this is my style. There, I don't follow rules. I just do what is pleasing to my eye. And um, that may not float your boat. But that just makes, this makes me feel good. So once I get a good feeling, um, when I see some things that I like and it, and it draws me in, that's what I do. You know, I don't, I'm not a professional here. <laughs> and I don't always, like I said, follow rules. Um, I just kind of do what makes me feel good. And yeah. <laughs> and that's the point. This is my journal anyways. This is going to me. I will be keeping this. And so... I'm going to please myself. Oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Can we scratch that out of the video? <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, yeah, crickets. Uh, I'm going to do what makes me happy, basically. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, this is going to hell in a handbasket. Here we go. So, if anything, I might add a little texture paste around here or something. And I want to show you guys these... Um, See how excited I get. But I got these. This is a um, transfer me sheet. I've seen that this is by Dress My Craft. Um, these are kind of like popular right now. I've been seeing them all over YouTube. Um, but it looks like a lot of work. You have to like cut it out, dip it in water, and all that. But so I won't be doing that right now. But I was thinking about adding some of these gold transfers on here. But maybe not this particular page. But aren't those beautiful? Um, yeah, well, let me show you these since I have them right here. These are some stencils that I purchased, and I think you guys might think they're awesome. I know I should probably do this in a separate video, but aren't these so cute? We might use one of these, so aren't these so cool? So this is from Dress My Craft, and these are all from Joggles. And Joggles is running, oh my gosh, they're running an amazing sale right now, and I'm pissed about it because <laughs> I just purchased, well, I'm not going to tell you how much I spent, but I re-upped so much of my stuff that I was running out of. I spent more than I ever spend because you guys know I'm cheap. And the day after they delivered, I got my stuff delivered, Joggles came out with a video saying, every $15 that you purchase, you get a free tube of um, Amsterdam acrylic paint, which I love Amsterdam acrylic paint. It's awesome. Every $15 that you spend, you get a free paint. No multi, like no um, double colors. They give you all different colors. I was like, girl, I could have got like 10 free paints, but it's okay. Joggles, I still love you. <laughs> so if you have extra money, you're looking for mixed media products, Joggles has you covered. And I'm not sponsored or anything, obviously, but um, I just love them so much. And their shipping is awesome. If you spend $50, you get half off. So all of everything that I bought, this huge bat, uh, box that I got, was five dollars to ship you guys five dollars and they have unbeatable prices so anyways dress my craft love this stencil um i'm a stencil aholic but i use them so i did say i wasn't going to make purchases for things that i'm you know ending up having to do sales for and by the way side note i i sold the chameleon markers yay so irma if you happen to be watching this um thank you so much for your purchase i hope your son loves his markers it was such a good deal i was able to get rid of them 45 bucks so i'm so glad that um they have a new home thank god because they've been sitting 
getting no love. And um, so yeah, dress my craft. One more dress my craft. I love this. I hadn't purchased a um, stencil like this before with the script, so I was super excited about that. And then, of course, you guys know I love my um, Elizabeth St. Hilaire st uh, stencils and masks. They are my favorite. And so I had to get this one. This is called Moon Dance. I've been wanting that one. It's a mask. And then this is Regular Joggles. I love this one. I got a bunch. This is Joggles. It's called Fans. And I thought it would be perfect in this. So I think I'm going to take this one aside and use this one for our um, what we're about to make. I think. We'll see. And then there's two more. This one is so cute. This one's called Endless. This one is called Branches. And then last but not least, this is another Elizabeth St. Hilaire called Wildflowers. And I love this one too. Oh, they're so good and yummy. Yay. So I thought I'd show you guys those. <laughs> um, and there's so much more I wanted to show you, but that's not what this is about. Anyways, I was just showing you those in case we use them for our... Let's let's make a tag. <laughs> let's make a tag. And we might do a couple. Let's see. So I'm trying to think exactly what I did for her tag that she wasn't sure how I did it. I know I used the embossing glaze. And this is Crackling Campfire. It's a newer color. Um, so I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to use my sprays. My Distress Oxide sprays. I use the spray stain and oxide spray and basically I just spray a bunch of colors on. So I have Crackling Campfire, that's new. Crackling Campfire spray stain and the oxide. They're like an orangey. I think they go really good with fired brick and then also let me grab my mahogany because that's my favorite. So give me one second to find that. Here it is. So here's some mahogany and actually yeah mahogany. Okay. And then to like break it up, and I don't know if I'm going to use all of these colors. I'm going to have to decide here. I always use my pumice stone. It's always a great go-to, which I just re-upped that. Iced spruce is a great grayish green color. Peacock feathers is always cool to use with oranges. I think it comes out really beautiful, so I think I'm definitely going to add that. And then bundled sage. So I don't know. Obviously, I don't think... I keep saying obviously, sorry. I don't think I'm going to use my bundled sage with this peacock feathers so I might just decide through one so I think I'm gonna I don't know if I should go with more naturals like maybe just do these I think I might just try this I'm just wondering what my pop of color is gonna be so I think the orange would be good so let's just use these let's use the ice spruce um, the crackling campfire maybe a little fired brick aged mahogany. I gotta make sure I have a little bit of both. So we have one oxide, two oxide, possibly three, and then a few of these. So this is a lot of colors, but we'll just see how it comes out. If it doesn't come out good, we can always do another one. <laughs> and so I then I stamped. So I don't think, I think I just sprayed the background. I gotta think. And then I stamped with and used the embossing glaze. So actually I need to find something to stamp on here. So what are we going to stamp? Um, let me find a stamp. I guess I should have done this beforehand. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I think, let me grab a couple stamps guys. Sorry. Over here I have some stamps. Let's do the dragon. Let's do the fan. We'll do a couple of these. Alright. I think this will look good. So I, I didn't plan this beforehand, like I said. So these are like the stamps that I have. So we can do the koi fish maybe. That might be cool. So now I'm thinking because I have this embossing glaze that's crackling campfire, it might just look you know, it's not going to really be popping off the page with all these colors. So I'm thinking about, like, maybe should I use a different color? So all this stuff is things, that, uh, they're things that you should think about before you do this. So let me see what I have down here. Um, 
these are my embossing powders here. And um, so Rusty Hinge is great, but it's kind of the same color. So maybe for a pop of color, you can use fossilized amber. What about a green? We have peeled paint, and I think there's a new, the new green too. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm going to go with something darker instead. So let's use this Hickory Smoke. That's a new one I haven't used yet. And I got the Kitsch Flamingo. I haven't tried that, but that's not going to go well. So I think I think that'll be good. Sorry if I'm all over the place. You guys know. I, okay, there's a green too. This is Rustic Wilderness, which is pretty cool. So let's just get those out, and I'll decide in a minute. And then um, this one. So I'll decide which one I'm going to use when, like, probably last minute. <laughs> okay. So, here we go. Let's see. I do have Rustic Wilderness here, too, so I'm just going to grab stuff and spray. <laughs> and I don't have any baby wipes with me, so... I will have to use my heat gun, too, so... Got my water nearby. So that's why I have my messy mat, and let's just get going. So I'm going to spray... That's Crackling Campfire. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's exciting. Okay, I'm just grabbing stuff now. Ooh. Okay. Um, fire brick. Now let's get some oxides. I should have grabbed some more oxide. Let's see. Iced spruce. Gotta shake it. That's different. Yeah, probably would steer away from that. It's a little muddy looking, <laughs> if you ask me. Oh, this is clogged, apparently. Oh, I should have got my new one out. Because I like that color. Let's see. There we go. So I like to mix my oxides and my spray stains together because it just the spray stains really help push the oxides forward and they just stand out beautifully when you're done so let's just keep that in mind here I'm gonna go in for a little bit of a darker oh that's really dark and maybe some down there oh I'm loving this and then I need some more some more color so let's try to add some green now what green do I want to go with? Do I want to go with this? I don't want it to look like Christmas. I gotta think fast here. Let me see if I can grab one more down here. I think I know what I want. Uh, old paper. Oh man, where is it? Let's see, got that one. Oh, where are you? Come on now. There it is. Okay. Bundled sage. That's what I was looking for. There we go. That's the color palette I wanted. Oh my gosh. Yay. <laughs> it always excites me when it turns out how I want it. So we're going to stay away from that. And then maybe a little more orange. So let's do the crack on campfire right in the middle. Okay. Right. Try to get little squirts. There we go. Oh, that is nice. I think <laughs> I'm loving it. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And then a little more of this. Right there. And then one more. <laughs> I get addicted, but I know what I'm going for there. Okay, so that looks like a lot. It is a lot. I'm going to heat this up. So I'm sorry about the noise. I just didn't want it to like mix too much because I love the way that looks.
And my heat gun won't go any closer, so <laughs> sorry about that. Look at that, you guys. And I didn't even oxidize it, so not yet. Oh man, that's beautiful. I'm loving that. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That's exactly what I pictured. I am like in shock that it actually turned out. Now of course I got to clean this up a little bit. Sorry about that. And you know, I try to go fast, you guys. I really do. <laughs> but we'll see. And normally I would take this and dip something in it, not to waste it. So, you know, I might just because I, why not? Like, I can do these scraps of paper here. Look at that. Yeah, I don't want to waste that. I can use this for a ta the skinny tag in our um, pocket that I was showing you guys. Whoa. Do both sides. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> if I can pick it up now. Come on now. Oh my gosh, I can't get it. There. There we go. That was a lot of spraying. <laughs> I'm having a hard time here. Okay, come on. There we go. It's kind of running together, but. All right, I'm just gonna set this to the side. I'm making a huge mess. <laughs> Let me grab this. And find a spot to put this real quick. Okay, set this over here. Go back to that. Okay. I'm wearing my good shirt today too. So. <laughs> okay. Why do I do that? Well, I just had a Zoom meeting with my doctor. Oh, my specialist, because I can't... Uh, he's at the, the uh, St. Joe's Hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And they're not open yet, um, you know, for visits, so I have to do the Zoom meetings for my visit every three months. Okay. So, I had to make sure I was dressed nice, you know. I don't want to look like I normally look <laughs> in my pajamas and hair all crazy. So, yeah. I didn't change. I just kind of stayed. I usually do my visits in my office here, so I just stayed stayed in here and did this. So look how beautiful that is on its own without oxidizing it with water or anything. But we're going to... I do love that. I do love it. I'm, I'm debating. Do I oxidize it? Don't I? You don't have to, but it is kind of magical most of the time. So I'm going to go ahead and do little bits of sprays. I'm going to push slowly on my knob to make big drops with this particular distress sprayer. So if you just kind of squeeze it really slow, you can get big water droplets. I'm trying to show you, that's why it looks like I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, and then if you spray it just regular, you get little water droplets. Oh, I didn't mean for that to happen, but that's okay. And then you can come in and dab. Try not to take all the color off, but dab yeah cool oh yeah okay now I'm gonna let that sit for just a second I like where that's going and let it oxidize for a minute I'm gonna hold it down because I don't want it to spread anymore I like what I like how it looks All right. Okay, one more heat gun, guys. Well, for now, one more, just for another second. And then we're gonna add our, um, our powder.
Almost done, sorry. <laughs> I know it takes a minute. Gotta make sure it's dry. And I'm not worried about this side because I'll do something to that too. Okay. Almost done. So now we're going to take this and yeah, it's a little wrinkled, but it's okay. And we are going to get a piece of paper. I am a mess. <laughs> kind of. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You can see like purples in it, which I wasn't expecting. I kind of liked it before I sprayed it, but I do like it now too. It's different. So there we go. We do have a little bendy because it was wet, but that's okay. We're going to get a piece of paper. And now I just have to think about, you know, what I want stamped on there and what color we're going to do. So, um, I think I still want to go with the dark here, I think. I do like this green. Now, the green will be a punch of color, that's for sure. So we can either go green or we can go dark. So, what do I want to do, guys? Speak to me. I mean, we could do the orange as well, but I think I like... I think I like these two, so, um, I think I'm going to go with the, uh, maybe we'll do both, maybe I'll do the out, outer edges with, with this and then do this on the inside. Yeah, who knows, we could mix them together too, that might be cool, let's just experiment, why not? So I was thinking we could do a whole bunch of like little fans, just press the fan on a whole bunch of times. That might be cool. Um, or we can do um, the dragon. We can do the dragon and the fans. We could do the fish. Could just do the fish right in the middle. No. Okay. I think I'm going to go with a whole bunch of fans. And who knows how that's going to look. I don't know. <laughs> Let me just think about it. <laughs> you can do like a fan here. A fan there. Just kind of stamp it all over the place. I don't know. Alright, let me get my stamp pad. Where's my little one? Oh my goodness. I am not very prepared. I do wish that I kind of planned this out. So all I have is this big one. <laughs> Sorry. But that's okay, it'll work. Kind of. It would be easier if I had my smaller one, wouldn't it? Oh, I have a geisha stamp, too. This geisha over here. Let's see. Could just do her in the middle. Like that. She'd be facing the other way. Let's do, um, let's, sorry, I really had to sit and think. Let's do the geisha, why not? I think I've done her already in the book a few times, but that's okay. Let's do the geisha. We'll just do one geisha stamp. So now I'm going to get out my embossing dauber. This is just an embossing dauber with clear glue, basically. And I'm going to daub up my geisha. Now remember when you use glue on your stamps, you got to wash it off after, so. Alright, I can't see this, so I'm going to hold it up to my face, sorry. I just want to make sure that I get all of her nice and glued up so I don't miss anything. Sometimes this particular dauber doesn't work so great so 
I just kind of go over it extra, but you really don't need to, you know, use an ex excess amount of glue when you use this stuff. Um, it sticks pretty easily. So I usually use way too much. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put her on. Like so, give it a stamp. Okay. And let me spray her real quick. Because I don't want her to mess up. I love this stamp. I got it from Top Flight Stamps, by the way. This Geisha stamp for around five dollars. Yeah, not bad. It was it's a beautiful stamp. Beautiful detail. Okay, so now I got my stamp all semi-cleaned here. <laughs> there we go. And then uh, now we got to pick a color here. So I think now that she's stamped on there, I'm going to go for the green. Who knows, maybe I'll... Oh my gosh, you guys. It's so hard when you're like, what do I do? You know what? Fired brick. Let's do red. Let's do red. I just changed my mind. I'm looking at her, and I know I have fired brick somewhere before it dries. Yes, let's do fired brick. It's just going to give that, you know, punch of red. So let's do that. And she might blend in a little bit, but she's you're just going to see her subtle subtly, you know. Oops, I got some green on there. I don't want that. Ah. It's good to have a Swiffer around with this stuff because it is messy. Alright, and then I'm going to dump her off. And don't tap the back. Just dump it. And you can give it a flick, but don't, don't like sit and tappy tap tap. See, I did get some on there. So I'm actually going to get a brush. Uh, let me get a, a brush here. Hold on. Just grab a brush here, and I'm going to just brush off the excess because I didn't use a um, static thing. I should have used the static pad. Sometimes there's static, and it'll stick everywhere. So just remember, everywhere that you see powder, it's it's gonna you know heat up and melt. So you want to get it off of the areas that you don't want it to melt, obviously. <laughs> Okay, and I have a huge clump right there. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's still wet, you know? I think this might be a little damp. That's it. That's a big mistake. <laughs> so make sure your paper's dry. Um, yeah, I definitely could have dried this longer. It is, it's watercolor paper, so this tag, it's a watercolor tag, so it, it holds the water quite a bit. Um, yeah, so this might not come out super clear. Because I don't want to get rid of her arm. Ah. Alright, I'm just going to go over it. See what happens. <laughs> Breaking my rules here. I never have this kind of trouble, so. I'm coming, I'll be done in just a sec. So the lesson here is that you want to make sure you have a dry tag and you also want to make sure yeah, that you have a dry tag. <laughs> or And you can use a static, one of those static pads like this right here. I happen to have one right here. You rub it on before you emboss. Okay, so it might not be perfect, you guys, but I think you get the point and I've been doing this long enough. So right there, it's not going to come out great. I can already tell you that. But... That's okay. It's not a big deal. Usually I can do this in two seconds, so. <laughs> All right. Pour this back in. All right. I want to make sure that's closed because it will go flying everywhere. All right, let's heat this up and see what happens. So I'm going to put it on, you want to use a heat gun on high and 
tip your um, your tag with this. Don't burn your fingers. <laughs> That was the worst embossing I've ever done, you guys. I have to tell you that. That's the worst embossing I've ever done. I'm usually, it's not hard to do, but I usually do a really beautiful <laughs> piece, and that was just, that did not come out good. But I think you get the, um, you get the idea. I Hopefully you can see this. So if I turn this like that, she's got a beautiful shimmer, and you can see her. And that's basically, if you're watching Crystal, that's how I did um, that's how I did the tag that you got. It was just a different stamp. I think there were a bunch of flowers, and that's how I got it. So either way, it's really pretty, and you can go around the edges. Let's do that, and then we'll call it a day, just because I'm disappointed in how that came out. So um, let's do the edges. I'm going to show you how I just do the edges, and gets a pretty cool effect like this. You can just do this. I know my son's like, what are you doing in there? I want to go play my game or go outside or whatever. <laughs> so I am going to just do these edges. Trying, it's hard to see if I have the glue on it. Hopefully I do. Okay, and I'm just going to take this dark color, hickory smoke, and I'm just going to go around the edges here. Make sure I tip that first, like that, and then do this one, and then this side. There we go. That looks pretty cool. And there. Alright, there we go. Let's get this back in here and heat this up and see what we got. There we go. Alrighty. I know. I hear you guys. I'm coming. All right. One more heat gun, you guys. One more. <laughs> and then we will be on our way. Let's, I see a little bit that I want to take off. Just a little in the middle. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. There we go. One more, guys. One more.
got really close to that. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. I like it. So there we go. There's our embossed tag. I hope you can see the shimmery. There we go. I'll hold it like this. Now we got that beautiful oxide and stains background. And then we have the really pretty shimmer from the embossing glaze. Did I even tell you guys that's what this was? Distress embossing glaze. We used hickory smoke and fired brick for the geisha and hickory smoke around the edges. And then we used our crackling campfire oxide spray. We used our dis distress spray stain and aged mahogany. I also used bundled sage oxide spray for that pop of beautiful color there. We used um, pumice stone oxide. So many. Fired Brick Spray Stain, Crackling Campfire Spray Stain, and um, Bundled Sage. Isn't that so pretty? And Iced Spruce as well. <laughs> so lots of colors. We got that purple, which really was unexpected and I love. So yeah, that's just a little technique that you can do. And it's already been an hour, almost. You guys know I usually don't get a whole lot out in my hour. But um, I'm going to come back on tonight. My husband gets home and film. And we are going to do another double page type spread. And I think we're going to do just a nice mixed media um background again and so just something different we'll just work on it we'll use our texture paste who knows i might even film again and show you guys something new that i got which are these infusions and i'm really excited to use them so um, maybe we'll be working with those as well so i'm i don't know i hope you guys are creating i hope that this was fun for you to watch and that you can try some of these if you you know if you are um thinking about embossing or using some some embossing powders you can get a great embossing gun for uh, you know 10 or 12 dollars that'll do the trick on amazon with free shipping and you can just buy one or two of these to start out they're around five dollars a piece um just to try them out but there's also embossing powders that you can purchase that don't do necessarily the same thing this is like a see-through glaze type thing but there's all different kinds and i just encourage you to experiment but i'm not trying to tell you to go spend a of money so just remember that um, you can get great details with just using one or two things and you know just getting a color that is if I can make one suggestion because I'm always about budgeting um, my husband would disagree if he heard me say that but you know um, I want to promote budgeting and saving our money for what we really need it for um, especially all the decluttering I've had to do lately. But if I could just recommend, if you want to try something out, get a universal color that'll go with a lot of stuff. This hickory smoke is dark, but it's beautiful. It's translucent and beautiful. And if you had to pick one color, pick a color that might go with a lot of stuff. I like the hickory smoke. I also really love the... Um, I really, really love this antique linen because it gives a, a look that looks like beeswax or looks like um, encaustic. So encaustic is really beautiful. And so if you don't have beeswax to melt on or whatever, the antique linen really gives that beeswax or, or encaustic look. So these two colors are really great and they're very universal. So just a little tip there if you want to try something out. Um, and then just any kind of embossing glue. Uh, yeah, so there's so much more I could talk about these. They do so many different things. You can use them on metal and all that. Maybe we'll get into that. Let me know if you want to, oops, if you want to know more about embossing, if you want to see it done on metal, because um, there's different techniques that you can use with texture paste and things like that. Um, is there anything else I wanted to share with you guys? Oh, I've been doing the sketchbook class. <laughs> I've never drawn anything in my life, and I was like... You guys will probably laugh when you see this, but I mean, I've never drawn anything like sketched. And so it's not done. It's just a rough sketch, but I, I've been doing the sketchbook revival. It was a free, um, like a bunch of classes and it's just really, it's really fun to, to get your mojo going and, and stuff like that with your sketchbook. And so I took this one class that's on there. And this is my owl that I sketched. <laughs> Look how funny it is. <laughs> Obviously, it's not realistic, but um, I can't wait to watercolor it because usually I watercolor other people's art because I'm not great at drawing. So I usually stencil, or stencil, I usually trace, which is not, which is fine. Tracing is fine, but that's usually what I do. I go through the tracing process, which takes forever, but I, I trace other people's artwork because I, I just don't like the way I draw. Um, but I haven't even really tried to sketch or draw anything in so long. And I was like, maybe I should just try.
cry. And so I just did this super quick, not realistic owl. <laughs> and um, yeah, I can't wait to paint it. I'm going to do some doodles in there and paint it with watercolors. So yeah, I want to show you guys my owl. <laughs> so yeah, fun times. So just go out there and create, you guys. Get out there, draw, work in your sketchbooks, do some um, mixed media in a journal, take five minutes out to color in a coloring book, just do something creative. Stay creative, stay yourself, stay kind to one another. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!